Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to another UXW Bill video. We're out at a metal scrapyard here today. I was getting rid of some appliance parts earlier and scrapping some old appliances when something caught my eye. This carcass of an old gas furnace. It's hard to say why it's here. The heat exchanger doesn't really look that bad, but this is kind of rusty. Maybe somebody just wanted a new one. But this thing was a big horse look at all of those burners i think each of these is good for what twenty thousand btus something like that there's one two three four five six seven of them so yeah 140,000 input btus 80 percent efficient so you're not going to get that much out of it but with a big furnace also comes a big blower wheel and I thought that and maybe a few other things might be worth grabbing out of this thing before it meets its ultimate fate. And yes, I do have the owner of the scrapyard's permission to be here and to do this. Let's see how much somebody got out of this thing. When was it made? August? No, June of 2005. So they got about 20 years out of it, give or take. That's not terrible. No idea if this motor's good, but it does turn freely. Let's get that thing out of there. All right, folks, I've managed to drag my treasure back here to the heating and air conditioning workshop. Might as well go ahead and test it out. One thing I can tell you already is that this capacitor is definitely weak. It's rated at 15 microfarads and tested at about 11.3. And really, when they're bad enough that a multimeter notices, there's a chance it's probably not going to work under the much greater stresses involved with starting this little motor. We're going to find out. There really needs to be a restriction on the outlet of these so that they don't overamp. I just kind of made a very quick and dirty one here in the form of simply bending this metal piece down. Hopefully that'll be enough. Anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll just plug this in over here. started and it ran. Hopefully my chair doesn't capsize. I don't think my meter is working right though. Have to check that out. I think I got my meter straightened out so let's try that again. I think it's gotten a little um, senile or something in its old age plus it doesn't help the fact that my father's idiotic dog decided to chew on it a couple years ago. But we'll go ahead and see what happens now. This is really a pretty beefy motor for a residential furnace. Three-quarter horsepower. We're allowed to draw 9.6 amps, so we're over-amping right now. Let's see if we can bring that down. Oh yeah, we definitely can. What I'm doing right now is dangerous because if this motor was not in electrically good condition, I've got no safety ground hooked up right now, so I would be the safety ground, which really would not be fun. I do not recommend that. We should probably have hooked that up. <laughs> We're running at the highest possible speed right now. I'll let that off, and yeah, it'll start over-amping again, so we better just... We better go ahead and just unplug it for now. Plus, that weak capacitor could also be a factor, although it definitely started and seemed to run okay for the most part. Now, of course, I have about a squillion of these things at this particular point in time. So the question is, what am I going to do with yet another one? Well, I actually do have something in mind. I'm not sure if I'll ever get around to this. Probably not in a timely fashion if I do. But I'm thinking, given that this is... The air in here is very stodgy and stale and doesn't really move and it's kind of hot. Although I do have other fans and I do have a big old tubular air circulator on the other side of the room here... I'm thinking that what I might do is make a plenum for this and actually attach ductwork to it and vent this outdoors somehow. Make sort of a building-wide exhaust system out of this because this is definitely, this is probably the beefiest blower wheel that I own of the direct drive type. Let's see if this motor got hot at all. Not really. Now, if I really wanted to test those windings, I would go and get my megometer and put on there attach that between one of the power carrying wires and the frame of the motor and see how that tests out. But 
I can't really imagine there's anything terribly wrong with this motor and blower wheel that a good cleaning wouldn't fix. So thank you as always for watching. And as always, do feel free to leave a constructive comment if you happen to have one, especially if you've ever built anything like this, because I'll be the first to tell you I'm not really anybody's idea of a tin knocker. Most of the metalworking tools we either didn't have or they were in pretty bad repair. Our metal brake, for example, was more of a metal broken in my heating and air conditioning classes. And even though we did use it to successfully make a plenum, I really could have done with a lot more practice than I ever happened to get in those classes. So that might be what I get up to with this even though I don't personally own a lot of sheet metal tools, I do have some tin snips. And of course, over here, I have a Hensler's Bender, which is a hand tool that you can use to make an awful lot of different shapes and transitions and plenums and things for heating and air conditioning use. And it hasn't had a whole lot of use, so maybe it would like to come down out of storage and be put into service for a project such as this. If I do something like that and I don't forget, maybe I'll make a video, I'll take you along for the ride and again, solicit your thoughts and opinions. So as always, again, thank you for watching. Certainly do feel free to leave a constructive comment if you have one. And here's a quick video postscript, one of two probably, because I've had people ask this in the past. Can you reduce the current drawn by the motor by shutting off the intake as opposed to the exhaust? Well, yes, of course you can. I just find it a little bit easier to reduce the current draw by restricting the motor's exhaust or the fan's exhaust outlet, supply air, whatever you want to call it, because it's a little easier to do and a little more straightforward, but this approach certainly works as well as, of course, you would absolutely expect it to do. Now for the second quick video postscript. At least it's my intention to be quick about this. The instrument that you're looking at right now is known as a megometer. This produces a high output voltage that is used to test the quality of insulation on a motor, transformer, contactor coil, basically any sort of electrical load that you can imagine. And in doing so, if there is an insulation breakdown somewhere that could lead to a short circuit or ground fault condition, this device will help you find it. Now, because this places a high voltage across the windings of a device under test, it's a very good idea not to touch that device, even if it's not made of something that is usually considered conductive, because under high voltage conditions, things that you would not otherwise expect to be conductors can surprise you if they happen to break down. This is, of course, quite heavily current limited, but that's not to say it won't still hurt if you give yourself a belt with this thing by accident, and hopefully not on purpose, because I really don't want to know about that. Our connections go between the ground, or the body of the device under test, and one of the power wires going into it, and the idea is here that if the insulation is in very good condition, there will be no lights at all appear on this tester after it stabilizes out. If the insulation is questionable, we might see one of these upper green or lower yellow or even the red light come on. But we'll push the button to make the test. And this motor would appear to be in perfectly safe electrical condition. So it should be safe for continued use. But even then, the safety ground ought to be hooked up so that if anything ever did go wrong, it would trip a ground fault circuit interrupting breaker if it was just a minor problem, or actually trip a regular circuit breaker if the leakage was sufficient to allow for too much electricity to flow, thus creating an overload.